Hey y'all, I've had several questions about my last video when I talked about ghost vectors uh, in exporting a DXF and then importing it into vCarve Pro. And I was going to include this information in the last video, but it was simply running too long. And I don't like half hour long tutorials, so I don't, I try not to inflict them on anybody else. Um, but here I'm going to explain what those ghost vectors are and show you how to use draft site to clean them up, get rid of them before you ever even import those uh, DXF files into vCarve. So if you want to learn how to take care of that and make life in vCarve a little bit simpler, stick around. Okay, back in SketchUp, I've got our bookshelf file loaded here and again we're just to re recap we are in standard view top we have parallel projection turned on and perspective turned off okay and this was the file that we um, went up and exported to DXF but one of the things to remember about uh, converting from DXF converting to DXF in SketchUp is that this is still a three-dimensional object okay it has uh, various faces to it and we can tell that by just doing a simple orbit here and kind of crank it a little bit and you see we still have all these faces here we still have a bottom plane to it and we have all these faces in the brackets and what have you so what those ghost vectors are actually are is all that geometry for the bottom and the faces and everything else so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna export another DXF here and uh, well I do I occasionally forget to uh, select it so yes I want to export the entire model and I want to do it in inches and again I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select polylines because there are curves here and click OK and I'm going to rename this book shelf DXF and we're saved now you don't need to memorize this here but do take note of it you don't need to write it down or anything like that we have 114 faces exported zero lines and 324 objects were ignored okay fine now I'm going to go ahead and minim uh, go into draft site now and draft site is the free CAD program that I use to uh, clean up and edit DXF files and uh, I'll leave a dis link in the description as to where you can get a copy if you'd like or any CAD program will do this we'll go up to the file menu and we will open now draft site its um, default format is the DWG file we're going to be looking for DXF files so we'll go down here and there's the bookshelf that we just saved so I will go ahead and load that by double clicking it now I'll zoom out here a little bit and it looks like we've got a good clean outline of our uh, file that we exported from SketchUp but if we go up here to view menu come down here to constrained orbit and click on that you see how my cursor turns into that little circular line with the spot in the middle now I'm just gonna left click right here and push my mouse up a little bit you can see what we're dealing with here we have all these faces that make up the edge of the uh, geometry here of the uh, shelf bracket and of the shelf itself and kind of no oh, oops kind of uh, twisted a little bit here we have the sides and we have the back so this these vectors these entities here are what I was calling what I do call ghost vectors because when you import this DXF file straight into vCarve Pro you're importing all of this geometry when all we need in vCarve is the top planes the top surfaces of all of these objects 
So what I'm going to do now is over here on my keyboard, I'm going to hit escape to get out of um, the constrained orbit. And I'm back to just standard selection. And you can see I can come over here and you see how the that entity changes when I touch it with my cursor. That's letting me know that there is a separate entity there. I can click it and that brings up the nodes that make up that entity. And then on my keyboard, just hit delete. Now it hasn't removed that bottom line or that top line. All it's done is removed that separate face there. And that's one of those 114 faces that were saved in exporting this DXF from SketchUp. So now I'm going to come along here and I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to highlight that bottom plane and on my keyboard hit delete. And now that geometry has gone. I'm going to highlight the back of that uh, shelf and that geometry has gone. Now I'm going to start above and to the left of this corner here and I'm going to click and drag a box around from left to right. That means that everything within that box will be selected. Everything completely within that box. Now left click again and it selects all those faces and I hit delete. And I come up here and click that and hit delete. And I'm going to go around the entire drawing selecting things here and there and deleting them. I don't want to put this entire shelf bracket within the box because then it will delete the entire bracket. But I'll just go around and take all of these vectors, everything that I get enclosed within a box and delete them. And remember it has to be completely within the box when you go from left to right. And there we go. Now all I'm left with, we go back up here and make sure, view, constrained orbit, left click. Now all I'm left with is I'm left with the solid outlines of our three parts here hit escape to go back to the selection tool. Now I'm going to come over here into this toolbox that says view. And you see you've got these representations of cubes and one surface on the cube is highlighted in blue. If you hover over it you'll see that uh, will give you a bottom view that'll give you left, right, front, rear. I want to go ahead and go back to the standard straight top view. Zoom out just to click here. Then again in draft site to save it in this format with um, no other format changes. I'll just go ahead and close it. It'll ask me do I want to save the changes. Yes I do. Okay. And now I can go ahead and open up vCarve and I have a I started a new file with uh, 25 inches width in X, 18 inches height in Y. My Z0 origin is going to be at the top of the material. My material thickness is 3 quarters of an inch. My XY datum position is going to be at the bottom left. I'm working in inches. I have no offset here and I'm going to accept everything else. And we are set to go. Now I'll go up to the file menu, import vectors, and there is the bookshelf DXF file that we just modified in draft site. Highlight it, click open. You can see it's imported those vectors. And we'll go over here to align selected objects because they are highlighted. Align it to the center of the material. Close that and there we go. Now we look, click one solid object, click one solid object, click one solid object just to make sure I'm going to draw a box around and select all three. Come over here to the join open vectors and I have three closed vectors. There is nothing to join. So those ghost vectors are gone because we cleaned them up in draft site. Now I can go ahead and 
modify everything. I can move it around should I want to. That's the cursor down key. There's the cursor up key. And I can nudge things around, move them into the position that I want for the material that I'm going to use. Here is my rotate selected objects. I'm going to anchor it in the center and turn it 90 degrees, apply, and of course I just turned it the wrong way. So from here I'll turn it 180, apply, close, then nudge it over closer to the um, other bracket because again I'm cheap and that gives me this larger area here to save to use for another project. And that's it. We've cleaned up our ghost vectors. We've uh, we're now ready to go ahead and uh, select all three of these objects and uh, calculate toolpaths and generate G code. Uh, I was going to talk about this in the last video, but the last video was just running way way too long. So I figured I would make a separate video and come back and cover it. And that's what we just done. So. I hope this helps you out and I hope it clears up any confusion you may have and what I was talking about when I was referring to ghost vectors. So if you got anything at all out of this video, uh, I hope you'll consider giving me a thumbs up down below. And whether you do that or not, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching and have a great day.